Well, senior day is, uh, you know, brings a lot of different things this year. Not only do we we lose three completely different seniors, you know, and in uh, Ben, we got a guy that's only been here two years, and uh, so hard to get the feel for what senior day means here, but I think he's gotten it through watching some film and listening to all the players that have come back. Uh, in Gavin, we have a guy who actually started as a sophomore in a Final Four, and then, uh, you know, injuries have kind of riddled his his career a little bit, and yet uh, probably don't beat Purdue without him, so it just goes to show how important the depth is. And in Tom, a guy that uh, I think Draymond said it best the first summer, you know, should be a four-year captain, and almost was. A uh, guy that just uh, has done so much for so many people, not players, um, whether it be fans in this community, whether it be people at his church, whether it be people uh, on this team or whether it be the staff. And uh, in my own way, I'm going to miss all of them. But to, having the opportunity to maybe play for a Big Ten championship at home on a senior day is, uh, is also real special. That hasn't happened all the time. It doesn't happen that often. Um, number one, to be able to do it at home is special. Number two, to be able to do it on senior night is really special. So I'm uh, excited about it. I'm, uh, it's always a sad day for me. It's always a bad pregame speech because um, I do appreciate what these guys have given us and what they've done and uh, how they've, uh, you know, in Tom's case, he started going to a Final Four and, and now to have maybe the winningest record winning his start in the history of the school is uh, means he's stayed as more consistent than we have and I'll always appreciate that. Tom, every kid who's come here since Tom got here has talked about him in the recruiting process. All five of your incoming class credited him at some part for their decision. He says he'd like to get into coaching. Could you see him as a GA on your bench, bench one day? He said it would be a dream. Hell, I could see him as the head coach here. Um, you know what? It's just those of you, and you all know him pretty well. I mean, you don't know him on a day-to-day -day like I do, but you all know him pretty well. Um, most infectious human being I've ever been around, you know. If he's had a bad day, I don't know when it was. Uh, you know, and I, I think he's a credit to what I should do a better job of becoming. And that's the most positive human being on a daily basis. So if he wants to get into coaching, my arms will be wide open. Um, I got a feeling he's going to want to get into motivational speaking. He's going to want to do something that shares himself with as many people as he can touch. And uh, what a cool thing that is, you know. And um, that should be a lot more than just the players that he plays with or the players that he would coach if he was a coach. It's almost he's almost bigger than that. But me personally. I'd die to have him. Have you ever had a guy get that involved with recruiting of other players, like a, as an active player? You know, I mean, way back in the day, you know, when Tina and Andre and DT, I mean, they did a good job. And then, you know, Draymond was very, very, very good. Um, you know, both those guys would help other sports and do other things. But Tom is, uh, he has that ability to talk from his heart where you don't even in any way, shape, or form thinks he, think he's a used car salesman. No insult to used car salesman, but I, <laughs> I think you know what I mean by that. Oh, and, no uh, pause. Like, he just yeah. goes. He just goes. He, if there's ever a guy who goes from his heart, it's him. And, uh, I, you know, I'll just cherish the texts I've got from him, the phone calls I've gotten from him. Uh, just the way he handles everybody and everything. I mean, he's involved with so many people that um, it's amazing and yet his you know you just think about this it, it, it was a pretty cool thing I was talking to Cash just the other day about Tom and you know he was saying how much he means to him I mean Cash took Tom's spot and they're best friends and they've been embraced ever since I mean I just not sure everybody could do that and uh so it speaks more about him as a human being than even a player. 
When he first got here, were you talking a lot about how appreciative he was of everything, you know, given where he was from, and you wanted to make sure he didn't lose that, and it sounds like he, no. he hasn't at all. You know, I used to tell uh, Edong Ebok when he got here, I said, you know, he had a very high IQ, he was a smart kid, he was a very appreciative kid, a yes sir, no sir, thank you kid. And then as the years went on, he was still great, but I, every once in a while I'd say to him, hey, you're becoming Americanized, you know, you're entitled, you're this, you're that. He really never was, I just, Tom hasn't changed one bit. He is as sincere, humble, um, giving as he was when he got here. The only difference now is because he's played here, I hope he has a bigger stage to send that message to all of us because we all need it. We all need it. And he would be as good an ambassador for anybody that he was advocating for than anybody I've ever known. Tom, how important have uh, Gavin and Tom been in kind of bridging eras of Spartan basketball? They're going from that Bryn Denzel Matt team to what you have now with the young guys. Well, that's, that's the other thing that's been so good even for Gavin. You know, he was, uh, Gavin too, you know, he was going to probably start Costello's senior year, I think. He had that great trip over in Europe. He was playing well, and then he broke the toe. And, you know, and he has embraced his role too. Uh, so now you got young guys that are coming in like Jaron and starting in front of him, and there could have been a lot of dissension or complaining or just – haven't seen it at all. I mean, I'm sure deep down when he goes home at night, he wishes he was playing more. But he has really embraced what I think and I hope this program has stood for, and that's winning and everybody together. And so uh, for those two guys to play in a Final Four, as you say, three years ago, and now have a chance to, you know, we haven't, they haven't won a Big Ten championship. They've won a couple of Big Ten tournaments, I believe but not a Big Ten championship. So it's just another mark for them. It's another way of, as you say, bringing the past and the present together. And uh, as a coach, that's what I'm most grateful for uh, when guys do that, when guys aren't afraid to, uh, you know, get involved with the future, not just the present. Has it crossed your mind that it could be Miles and Jaron's last game at the Breslin too? You know, it, it, it probably should more than – it does, um, because last year I thought I was sitting here and I was even contemplating having uh, Miles kiss the S, you know, or the Spartan head. But, um, you know, what, what I've learned now in this business is it would be unfair either way to think of it that way. Um, I just want what's best for, for those two guys. There's no question that they're both going to have some decisions to make. And... Uh, when I think of it that way, I I feel good about it. I don't feel bad about it. I feel good. I feel like they have given me everything I could ask, and they've done it in a very unselfish, with some humility, and never really, I wish sometimes Miles still would a little bit think of the future. You know, I think he's so much into the present of what's going on, and he's so unselfish. And, you know, Jaron has fallen right into that. And, and kind of like, uh, you know, a few years ago with, with different players, I, I think Miles has helped Jaron too because they came in with a similar ranking and a similar pressures on him. And, and I think Miles has done an incredible job of helping Jaron. And Jaron is uh, an incredible kid in his, his own way. I mean, I, I have no... Um, I can do nothing but feel good about it. Uh, will it. Will I look at it that night? Will I wonder? Probably. Probably. Will I, will I wonder in a negative way? Definitely not. Matt, I, I feel so good about it. A couple weeks ago, I think it was before Minnesota. If it wasn't, I apologize. But Tom talked about the team players, not us, not fans, not the administration. The players needed to make sure you knew they loved you. I'm curious, did that conversation ever happen? And, and what did it mean to you? Well, of course, it's been a little bit of a, a different year, uh, you know, especially the last month or so. And and uh, I felt it before, but maybe I felt it through osmosis a little bit, you know, just my big word for the whole <laughs> month. Um, but, you know, when they, when they tell you stuff, 
I would, you know, it's it's um, it's so from the heart with this team. It's almost like, you know, I, I said it. I said it when I spoke about Judd the other day. You know, I I never told Judd I loved him until I spoke at his funeral, and it was just his personality. It was probably I was scared too, you know. But these guys, they just aren't that way, you know. And personally, I'm not that way. So. Yeah, they've said a lot of things that uh, I think has been good for everybody. And I'm hoping that this team, this team really can be part of our entire school and community's healing process for all that's gone on. I mean, it's one of those teams that if you had to pick a team you'd want to be here to represent this moment under some tough circumstances for the survivors, for everybody that's gone through something. This would be the team. Um, after the game, I think you mentioned about Steve Kerr letting his guys coach. You, you brought that up. And I wonder when you get guys like these three seniors who've probably combined to play like 350 games. When you're in real time, do you say, Gavin, what do you say? Or Tom, what do you say? Like, how much does that actually occur? I, honestly, I, I don't know if it's still in there, but I used to have it in my locker room, a player coach team. It's better. So when Steve Kerr did that, I laughed. And, and I sent him a text, and then he he couldn't believe how that thing. I mean, I that was 15, 18 years ago when uh, you know I'd throw the clipboard at Mateen or I'd throw the clipboard at Draymond, and it reminds me of the time when I threw the clipboard at him. He threw it back at me, and I went to break the thing, and that's when they put the fiberglass one in there. I couldn't break it. And Draymond says. Uh, Better get in the weight room. <laughs> so that was an interesting huddle. I can't even remember if we won or lost that game, but it was an interesting huddle. But, uh, you know, I, I, I really believe that this team could. I mean, I have, there's been a lot of times that Tom has come in. And, and you know what's funny? 90% of the times in the last two months when he's come into a huddle, playing or not playing, it's always, Coach, we got to get, you know, you'd think his boy is Miles, everybody knows that. But it was always, Coach, we got to get Cassius a shot when we run this. And uh, so I do listen to that. I mean, any coach, you know, Kerr just, I did it in a huddle like this, so most people couldn't see it. Um, Kerr just kind of stood there, gave him the clipboard, gave him the thing, went off and took a siesta. And I did get some letters when I when I used that term. I used to get some letters that said, hey, they pay you a lot of money, but coach, why don't you coach instead of the team, you know, players, you know? But I, I, I think that there are players, and I think you're seeing the next one coming in, in Cassius, you know? Because smart players that understand things, and I, I thought it was a brilliant move on his part, and uh, I couldn't believe anybody would think of it as disrespectful. I couldn't believe anybody would even question it. I mean, to me, that's that's where there's too much, um, too much, uh, too many talk shows. I guess I don't know. Everybody's got to do everybody. Because I, I, I thought uh, of all the times I respected Steve Kerr, and I have, I have had a lot of them, especially you know dealing with Draymond and that out there. Um, <laughs> that was one of my my best. I just thought it was pretty classy that he had enough, that he had enough, um, he was strong enough, confident enough to be able to say, yeah, and maybe they know a little better than I know right now. All good. Anything else, guys? This, the culture of this group that they've created, sort of having a series of teams that are really guys you enjoy being around. I'm wondering, especially Tum Tum, how much how critical he was to that and coming out of some years that maybe you didn't enjoy as much. Yeah. I mean, there's always a couple of years you don't enjoy as much as others, but I mean, I've been on a pretty good run the last four or five years, if you want the truth. But, um, you know, I'll say this, and I, I, I don't know it, but the last year at this moment, I mean, I thought Miles was gone. And, uh, you know, whether people believe that or not, I don't know. I mean, I get people thinking I tried to convince him to stay and I think most of you know that wasn't true but if I had to look back and there was a bunch of reasons why Miles stayed you know and I get to look at him the other day and say well this was one on your list and we got a chance to do you know and and there were some different things that were on that list you know winning the tournament out in, in Portland and um, you know setting a record for the 
best start. I mean, all these little things were just all part of his deal. But if I had a look at it, I'd say one of them was to play with, with Tom and, and Josh and Cassius. I mean, he had, he had a close-knit group there. But Tom was the Pied Piper. I mean, I, I think Tom, um, if, if there was a reason outside of basketball why Miles Bridges stayed, I think it was Tom. I really do. I just think that he had an impact on his life. And Miles is a good enough kid that he appreciated that. And uh, there's definitely it was a serious impact. And um, so, you know, I told my guys – in this year, when everything, you know, when we started the season and everybody talked about, uh, you know, it was like they're going to the movies tonight, they're going out to eat, you know, this is what they did all summer. Uh, I heard so many stories about the, uh, the Pro-Am League, you know, and how they all hung around and what they did. And um, I just said to my guys, you better start working harder because, you know, one meeting we had, I said, did you call everybody? And one of my assistants said, well, no, we just call Tom. <laughs> and <laughs> it gets handled, <laughs> you know. And I said, well, you're lucky because that's not the way it is all the time. So you don't get fooled. I mean, next year it's going to be a little different. And we'll get another guy, but, you know, there'll be better players. I just hate to keep talking about him because there's, there's everybody. And, and when I say that, you know, one of the guys that talked about least maybe had as big an impact on his team, and 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 that's Ben. I mean, Ben had a unique impact on his team. You know, is he disappointed? I don't know when you interviewed him. I mean, he's got to be a little disappointed because he is healthy, but that was one of the things he wanted to do. get him through so he could be healthy because he thinks he can play in Europe. He's got the two-way ties and all the things he's got. But... You watch him the other day, he plays three minutes and he has three assists. He's a very smart player. He's helped Jaron Jackson a lot. And and that reminds me of, you know, when Sutan helped Draymond and this guy helped that guy and Draymond tried to help AP and, you know, it, it's Costello tried to help some guys. Um, in his own way, a guy that didn't play much was really helpful. And when we put him on a scout team, which I had to bring him in and say, listen, I got a, you're a six-year guy. I only want to put you on there so you can get more reps, so you can get more time. But I think you can really help this team. And he was like gun-ho 100%. So then he grabbed um, X and said, well, why don't you come with me? And those two together, and there's times that we think our bigs on the scout team are as big as good as some of the bigs we're playing against. And so, you know, in my own way, I'm going to miss them all, but... Those two guys have had a different kind of impact. Gavin has maybe plain in a way, but Ben and, and Tom are maybe more what they do in the practice and off the court right now. And Tom still has an impact on the game, but it's been uh, it's been different. It's 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 going to be missed. I think all of you.